What's up everybody, my name is Brad and welcome back to the channel or if you're new here, welcome to the channel for the very first time. I appreciate you stopping by, hanging out with me while I ramble on and chat about some books for a little while. Uh, today we're going to be talking about some of my recent reads, recent-ish reads, because uh, I haven't made a video for quite a long time, so we're going back a couple months. We're going to talk about the books I read in like May, June, July-ish. Um, I didn't want to do anything I've read so far this, this month in August because I'm going to try to do a monthly wrap-up once August is over and actually collect all those books together. So this is over the last three-ish months or so, May, June, and July. And I've got about 20 books here I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about all the ones I read on Kindle first because I wrote them down. So if I don't do that, I'm going to forget about them. So we'll do the, uh, the Kindle books first, and then we'll go through the physical copies of books that I've read. Uh, so grab you a snack, get you a drink. You, know, you can get your, your paper cuts mug, plug, <laughs> selfless plug, shameless plug, whatever it is. Um, get you a drink and sit back. We'll talk about some books. Uh, so first up, these first two books, they're by the same author. And a lot of these books are going to be books I read for paper cuts. Speaking of paper cuts, uh, so we've talked about them on the show so you can go back and catch those episodes if you'd like to check that out now but the first two books first up is the massacre at yellow hill which is book one of the that light sublime trilogy i believe the trilogy is called um, by c.s umble and this is a a horror western not a splatter western but a horror western and i really really dug it um, i think it was previously released either it was self-pub or with another publisher and it's since been reworked, got a new cover, redone. The whole trilogy is being put out now by uh, Cemetery Dance, which is really cool. But book one, The Massacre at Yellow Hill, I really liked it. Um, I'm really digging all the horror western books. I just, I like that historical time frame for storytelling. I think it blends really well with horror. And I'm not going to be able to remember any of these characters' names throughout probably this entire video because I'm bad with names. But I really like the camaraderie. It was almost less like an adoptive father-son relationship that was going on. We have a younger kid, younger boy. He's maybe, I don't know, 13, 14 or so years old. And he is working with, I believe it's a former slave, and it was the young boy's father's assistant or associate. Uh, something happened to the dad, something bad happened to the dad. And then the, the assistant, the associate, sort of adopted the son. And they're almost kind of like bounty hunters in a way. They kind of travel around and they're trying to, basically they're like monster hunters. Bounty hunter, monster hunters, which is really cool. There's a vampire in the book, which I really dug the vampire. Uh, but it's this really cool blend of this, this father-son sort of adoptive relationship. And then all the horrors that you would find in the normal Wild West. And then on top of all that, there's this sort of cosmic horror, this sort of uh, like secret society cult that's going on that they are encountering and trying to put a stop to, or basically the world is going to end as they know it, and cosmic horrors will be unleashed. It's a really cool book. I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to reading book two, uh, which now that I said it, I'm not going to be able to remember the title. Something about red. Uh, the red there's red on the cover, uh, but book two is already out, and then book three is going to be out later this year, maybe in November or December. Uh, the whole trilogy's already been written. They're all coming out this year. Uh, but this is book one of the That Light Sublime trilogy, The Massacre at Yellow Hill by C.S. Umble. I really, really dug it. If you are liking the splatter western stuff, uh, the horror splatter western stuff that Death's Head Press has been putting out, I suggest you check this one out as well. It's really fun. And then the second book I read by uh, C.S. Umble is or was um, All These Subtle Deceits. And that is book one of the of the Blackwell series, which I think is going to end up being about five books long. Uh, this one was completely different than the horror western. This one is more along the lines of sort of um, like The Exorcist. Uh, there's an exorcism involved, uh, people being afflicted by demons and spirits and things like that. It really reminded me of um, The Dresden Files in a way. It has nothing to do with The Dresden Files. It's completely different but there was, just, there was just this feel, this tone about it that I can't quite put my finger on to be able to translate into words for you guys. 
but I kind of got this vibe of the Dresden Files mixed with like The Exorcist. It was a really cool combination. I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to diving more into that mythos of what is going on in uh, this, the city of Blackwells, why that seems to sort of be a conduit for entities and spirits to come through. Like the veil is a lot thinner there than in other places and spirits and demons and whatnot seem to be e more easily able to transfer over into into our world, our reality. And the cool thing is the um, Massacre at Yell Hill and this series, um, all these subtle deceits, they're set within the same world. They're, you know, about 200 years apart, but they're within the same world, which is really cool. So I think things that happen in that Massacre at Yell Hill, the, that Light Sublime trilogy is going to be sort of the cause, and then the effect is what's going on in the all these subtle deceits in the Blackwell series. I think that's kind of what um, Umble is going for. Yeah, if you like uh, The Exorcist, Demons, and that kind of stuff, and if you've read the Dresden Files series and just like that overall vibe and would like that sort of bled into an Exorcist-type series, definitely check that one out. Um, I love the cover for it, too. The cover is, I'm not an art history person, but it has this sort of Renaissance kind of feel to it. That's probably not even right at all. I don't really know what I'm talking about when it comes to art, but it has this sort of historical religious sort of aspect to it i don't know i don't know how to describe it but the covers are really cool i really dig them it's a really cool book i'm looking forward to reading more of them uh, that one is all these subtle deceits book one in the blackwell's series by c.s umble uh, next up this one was one of the books we read for the spine breakers book club i can't remember if it was i think it was for may it was either april or may uh, but this one is uh, Mothered by Zoja Stage. I hope I'm saying her first name correctly. Uh, Zoja Stage, I believe. This is her newest book. I think it's the publisher's like through Amazon. I might be wrong or it's a subsidiary of Amazon. Uh, but this is my first read of hers. I think her most popular book is probably Baby Teeth, which I have not read yet. Uh, but this one was Mothered and I liked it. I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. I thought it was it was good. Um, I sort of wish more would have gone on with it, uh, but it is set during the pandemic, and that might have been sort of why I didn't enjoy it as much, because I'm just sort of over all the pandemic kind of stuff for now. Uh, but it's set during the pandemic, so everyone's sort of isolating and having to deal with the repercussions of that, um, you know, not being able to go to work, having to worry about, you know, money for rent and food and all that kind of stuff, worrying about going out and getting sick. And the main character... Um, her and her mom have this very strained, stressed relationship. Uh, the mother's getting older. Her newer husband had passed away, and she sort of needs help. So she's either going to have to move into a nursing home, or she's going to move in with her sort of estranged daughter. Um, estranged might be putting it too heavy, but sort of estranged daughter to help her pay the bills during the pandemic since she's really not able to work and stuff. So it's putting the, you know, the relationship back together. You know, they already sort of get on each other's nerves. There's that stress there. And then them moving back in together sort of brings back all of these uh, memories from the girl's childhood. She had a, a sister as well that had um, some medical issues. She was handicapped and brings back some bad flashbacks, sort of PTSD stuff about that. And then what really caused, what really went on uh, that caused her sister's death. That's not really a spoiler. I think that's on... The synopsis on the back of the book as we're sort of the whole book we're going through and dealing with the mother and daughter's relationship and then the stressors of you know looking back in the past and what really happened to uh, the other sister that passed away uh, like I said I was it was enjoyable it was good um, I'm still looking forward to baby teeth because I heard that's great so I will check out more stuff from Zoja stage um, I just didn't love this one but overall it was good and I think I would recommend it if you like if you're into like the pandemic horror stuff, if you like isolated stories where they take place with just a few characters in pretty much one location, if you like that dynamic, that mother-daughter relationship with all the stressors that go along with it, um, definitely check that one out. Uh, that one is uh, Mothered by Zoja Stage. Uh, next up, speaking of horror westerns, this is one of the new splatter westerns from Death's Head Press, or they're called Dead Sky Media now. I can't remember what they're called now. I think they changed their name. Uh, but this one is uh, How the Skin Sheds by Chad Lutzke. I love Chad's work. 
Always been a big fan of his stuff, so I was excited to see that he wrote a splatter western, and this one was a lot of fun. Uh, the two main characters, again, I'm not going to be able to remember names because I'm horrible at that, but the two main characters in this one gave me very much uh, vibes of uh, Joe R. Lansdale's characters, Hap and Leonard. They have that same dynamic. Uh, one's a black guy, one's a white guy, but they're best of friends, and they sort of have that back and forth camaraderie that you know they can crack jokes at each other, make fun of each other, and everything, sort of that slapstick back and forth. So I really like their uh, dynamic, their relationship together. And this is sort of a, um, a cat and mouse chase story. So the main character's sister has been brutally murdered and the daughter was left alive. So it's the main character and his niece and they are sort of on the trail, on the hunt for whoever or whatever this killer happens to be. And then all the trouble and bad people and situations and everything, they run across on the trail hunting down uh, this murderous villain, human creature. I don't want to give anything away. You'll have to read it and find out what is actually going on for yourself. Uh, but the, the villain, sort of his inspiration and sort of the title as well, How the Skin Sheds, was inspired by uh, real life. I don't know if he's considered a serial killer or just a killer. I don't know how many people he killed. Uh, but real life killer Ed Gein. Uh, which was the inspiration for Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw uh, Massacre movies. Uh, so that's the inspiration for the villain in this. Um, it was fun. I, again, I really like Chad's work. He's, you know, his prose is straight to the point. It's punchy. He doesn't spend a lot of time writing up a bunch of fluff and filler. Um, straight to the point with the stories. I really liked the relationship with the two characters and then that cat and mouse on the hunt trying to track down whatever this evil person is that murdered the sister. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Highly suggest you check it out. And check out all of Chad's work if you have not already. Uh, but this one is uh, How the Skin Sheds by Chad Lutzke. It's one of the newer splatter westerns from Death's Head Press. And again, I think their new name is like Dead Sky Media, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, up next is The Moonshine Messiah. So switching gears away from horror. This is, I think the subtitle is A Mountaineer Mystery, I believe. Uh, this one is by Russell W. Johnson. This is from Shotgun Honey Books. I've turned into a big fan of Shotgun Honey Books. I really like the stuff they put out. Um, a lot of crime stuff, a lot of sort of regional lit, um, Appalachian folklore, not folklore, but Appalachian lit kind of stuff. And this one was a lot of fun. And this one is supposed to be book one in what is going to be turned into a trilogy, is what Russell told us uh, during his episode of Paper Cuts. This one, um, if you're a fan of the show Justified, it's a it's very similar to Justified in ways. Um, it takes place in West Virginia. Our main character, she is the sheriff of this small little town, and then the town next door. It is so small that like they don't even really have a sheriff's department anymore. So she's sort of taking over their jurisdiction as well. And her mother is sort of this local kind of crime boss. Her brother is this sort of conspiracy theory right wing kind of nut that has his own radio show and spouts off all this crazy stuff and has sort of this almost this religious following you know people really you know bite onto every word that he says and believe everything that he says and so she's got that going for her so she's a sheriff her mom is a basically a mob boss in a way a crime boss and her brother is just sort of right-wing militant militia lunatic kind of guy and then something comes down to where in order to keep her job and not go to jail for something she has done uh, she has to go and bring her brother and go arrest her brother so it's sort of you know her and her job and sort of her morals versus her family and those obligations what you would need to do for your family you know, is she going to put her brother in jail? Is she going to bite the bullet and go to jail for what she's done? She's sort of considered a, a dirty cop for the rough justice that she does. She's a good character, but she sort of goes about getting justice in maybe not the best of ways. Uh, sort of pushing um, forcefully on people to get the justice done that she needs to get done. So it was really fun. Again, there's a lot of these books have sort of this family dynamic theme going through them. Uh, the sheriff versus the mom, who's uh, this crime boss, versus the brother, who's this militant kind of guy. And while those worlds come crashing together and what um, happens from that, it was, it was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to 
seeing how this series will continue based on how this book ended. Um, so if you're looking for something like Justified, this Mountaineer sort of crime thriller, uh, I guess kind of mystery in a way as well, uh, definitely check this one out. This one is The Moonshine Messiah, which is just an excellent title. I love the title. Uh, the Moonshine Messiah by Russell W. Johnson. Um, up next is, uh, this one is a short story collection. It's a pantheon of thieves and other real, weird tales by Coy Hall. Um, this was fantastic. This is my first time reading anything by Coy Hall. And I think he might be the best historical fiction horror writer doing it right now. I think he is a history professor in real life. If not, I know he's a big history buff, and that definitely bleeds and comes through in his stories. You can definitely tell that he really um, factors in the appreciation for the historical accuracy in these stories. Um, there's all kinds of stories in here. A lot of historical stuff, some folklore. There's even some kind of sci-fi-ish kind of stuff going on, some cosmic horror. Um, it was a fantastic collection. I'm really looking forward to reading more of Koi's stuff. Um, he's got a crime book coming out with Shotgun Honey called um, A Seance for Wicked King Death, I believe. And then he has a folk horror book coming out with Nose Touch Press called A Plague of Wolves, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so I'm really, really looking forward to reading more of his stuff. So if you like historical um, horror stuff, it really sort of felt like uh, medieval fantasy in a way, but mixed with folk horror and just normal horror, some cosmic kind of stuff. It was great. Um, there's one, and I don't remember the titles of the stories. There's two that sort of go together. There's this sort of this big, huge cosmic entity. But there's one uh, very folk horror where this sort of wounded knight, I think it's this one, I might be mistaken, but it's a wounded knight and they move him into this, he's in this little village, they move him into, into a house, and in this sort of house, there's all these carved, uh, figurines of cats and humans and stuff like that. That one might have been my favorite story in there. Uh, but overall, a fantastic collection. I highly suggest you check it out. It is um, A Pantheon of Thieves and Other Weird Tales by Coy Hall. Up next is What Kind of Mother by Clay McLeod Chapman. This is his newest book. It comes out next month in September sometime. Uh, this is my first read of Clay's. Um, he came through on tour last year. To Kentucky for his book Ghost Eaters and I got to go to the event in Louisville at Butcher Kevin Books and it was a blast. He is a fantastic reader. He did a reading from the book and it was amazing. It didn't even feel like he was reading. It almost felt like he was acting out this play. He had his notes and he barely even looked at them the whole time. He basically was in character acting it out. It was great. So I hope he comes through Kentucky again for a tour for the new book, What Kind of Mother. Uh, this book so I kind of went in with no expectations. I didn't really know what it was about. I knew it involved crabs in some way because he'd been sort of teasing that all over Twitter. But I didn't really know what I was getting in for as far as his writing style and really the story itself. And it started out kind of what I was expecting, like this kind of whodunit. Um, I don't think it's a spoiler. I think it says on the back of the book that this baby has gone missing and no one really knows what happened to it. It's been missing for years. No one ever found a body anything like that. There weren't really any suspects, anything. So it started out, it started out sort of this typical, you know, who done it? What happened to this baby? Who kidnapped him? Who maybe murdered him if it was killed, whatever. And then at some point it just took this sharp left turn and just went in this completely other direction. I was just like, what in the world is going on? I remember putting on Twitter, like, I have no idea what's happening in this book, but not that I was confused. I just, I had no idea where this book was heading. It was completely in unexpected direction. It was super weird and strange and bizarre. And there was this odd kind of body horror involved and just, it was bizarre. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it, but I really, really dug it. It was, it was completely not what I was expecting, but I think it was so much better because of that. And the beginning had sort of this, if you've seen the show, um, True Detective especially season one. It was really giving those vibes. There's one part where they're talking about this duck blind and I could just visualize it just in the middle of the, the marsh and the water and there's a boat and it's just slowly going towards it in the fog. I could just visualize this duck blind. 
And then it went in this wild, crazy direction that I was not expecting. Again, there was gnarly body horror. It was kind of psychedelic and trippy a little bit. Um, I really, really dug it. I'm really looking forward to reading more of Clay's stuff. And the end was, was kind of poignant and sad, which I really dug the ending as well. Overall, it was a really great story. Uh, super weird. Look out for the crabs. I don't think I'll ever look at a crab the same way again after reading this book. Uh, but yeah, definitely check this one out. If you're a fan of Clay's other stuff, I think you'll dig this one. This one's sort of a uh, Southern Gothic kind of story. It mostly takes place in Virginia, uh, around like Chesapeake Bay and all the, the bays and inlets and rivers and, and whatnot through there. A lot of crabbing and like fishing and that kind of stuff. All of it, a lot of it takes place sort of on or near the water. A really cool story. Really dug it. Uh, again, hope, hope Clay comes through Kentucky so I can pick up a book and have him sign it for me like he did with Ghost Eaters. Uh, this one is uh, What Kind of Mother by Clay McLeod Chapman. And then the final two books I read on Kindle, these are also by the same author. Uh, first one is I Am I or I Am AI. Uh, this is a novelette by Ai Zhang. And I really dug this one. This one was cool. It was a sort of um, futuristic, dystopian kind of story that is dealing with AI, which is, is kind of topical for all the AI debate and everything going on right now. And it's basically this main character. Um, I can't remember her name either, but she's basically cutting off parts of her body, not like she's doing it herself, but she's getting parts of her body sort of, she's sort of mutating into a robot. So she'll get like her hand cut off and get a robotic hand in and she'll take an eye out and get like an eye implant and all this kind of stuff. So she's basically becoming less and less human and more and more uh, robotic, more and more like an android to be able to keep up with uh, her job. You know, the machines are taking over and humans just can't keep up. So she's losing more and more of her own humanity and becoming colder and colder, sort of losing the heart of herself as she is slowly transforming herself into this sort of soulless robot so that she can perform her job up to an efficient level to make money, to pay off the debts, and then also to pay off for the upgrades that she's getting. She can't afford the, the best equipment to upgrade herself so she gets lower in equipment and eventually degrades and she has to upgrade that. So it's just like this endless vicious cycle as she keeps upgrading herself to be able to make more money, but then she has to take that money and put it back into herself to upgrade herself. So it's just this constant vicious cycle. Her battery's always draining down and she has to get charged up and the people she lives with like under this bridge, they sort of, I don't want to say they leech off of her, but they depend on her to charge their equipment and like plug in their utilities and things like that. I uh, had sort of Blade Runner vibes going through it, which I really dug. Uh, talking about a lot of sort of consumerism and big corporations and things like that. Had a lot to say about that. It was really cool. It was a novelette. It's really short. It's only about 80 pages. Uh, but I really dug the, the world she created for this little story. I'd like to read more in that universe. It was cool. Uh, so that first one is I Am I, or I Am AI, however you want to say it, uh, a novelette by Ai Zhang. And then the second book from her is Ling Hun. Um, I believe it's considered a novella. It's right on that edge, novella, no, novel length, short novel length. But this one was cool as well. This is a really cool, uh, unique take on the haunted house story. You know, usually in Western society, we talk about ghosts and haunted houses and they're bad. You don't want to go there. Bad things happen. You know, that's where people sneak in and try to look around and then something always bad happens to them. And no one wants to purposely live in a haunted house or purposely be surrounded by ghosts or whatnot in Western society, you know, movies and books and stuff like that. This one was the, this one was the complete opposite. These houses were haunted and they were highly, highly sought after like people purposely wanted to move into these haunted houses so that they could be um, rejoined with the ghost of their love of their loved ones so the the ghosts weren't malevolent uh, they were their family members their loved ones and they so desperately wanted to um, be attached to them again in any way they could so it was sort of the opposite of what we normally see in a typical uh, ghost story instead of 
being scared or running away from it, they were going towards it. And it had this sort of dystopian vibe as well, where people would like give up everything. They would become homeless to live outside of these homes just for the opportunity to sort of a bid on an, a house at auction if one ever came up for sale. And then that whole auction thing was this almost Hunger Games kind of scenario. Uh, very violent and vicious, which was I was not expecting with the rest of the tone of how the story was going. Uh, so yeah, it was this weird sort of dystopian Hunger Games-ish kind of scenario mixed with you know the really longing for not being able to let go of the dead. You know, maybe they, the ghosts, the spirits want to be left alone so they can pass on and move on to whatever is next for them. But they were just, the, the, the loved ones who are still alive, they were just clinging to them and could not let go and would do anything to be able to spend more time with their loved ones moving into these houses, which had the capability of being haunted. It was a really cool story, really cool flip on the, on the traditional haunted house story. Uh, so if you like haunted house stories and want something fresh and new and different, definitely check out this one. This one is uh, Ling Hung by Ai Zhang. And that is all the, um, the e-books I read in the last couple months. So let's get into some of the physical books here. Uh, so this one I read either very, very end of April or very beginning of May. Uh, this one is uh, Back to the Dirt by Frank Bill. This is my first book I read by Frank. We also had him on Paper Cuts, and I really dug this book. It re very much reminded me of the writings of like uh, David Joy, Donald Roy Pollock, uh, those kind of authors, uh, kind of S.A. Cosby as well. Um, it's a crime book, and it is um, kind of like the cover here. So we have our main character. Let me see if I can actually hit his name. Miles is our main character, and he is a, a Vietnam vet who's come back and now he has sort of this uh, blue collar worker. He works in a factory and there's sort of two sides to him. It's the, the blue collar work now. He's a weightlifter. He takes steroids now. And then there's these PTSD sort of horrific flashbacks to his time in Vietnam. And he is sort of haunted by the ghost of his companions, um, his you know fellow military companions that he lost in Vietnam. You know, and it's almost like, you know, is he really seeing these people? Is he hallucinating it? Is it just all in his head? You know, it's al it almost had this supernatural element to it, um, to the story. And then there's crime stuff involved um, where the girl, his girlfriend is a stripper and her brother, I can't remember, her brother gets killed or they think her brother killed somebody and all this kind of stuff goes on. Uh, it's a really good book. I really enjoyed it. The main character, Miles, is based off of um, the author Frank Bill and his dad. So his dad was the Vietnam vet, and then Frank is the, the factory worker, the, the bodybuilder stuff. So it's a combination of him and his father. It's a really gritty novel. Uh, it takes place in, like, southern Indiana, a little bit of Kentucky, northern Kentucky and the Louisville area. So sort of that, you know, mid United States sort of grit kind of stuff like uh, Tiffany McDaniel writes a lot of stuff out of Ohio. So it was it was really good. I'm really, really looking forward to reading more Frank's work. I picked up his collection, uh, Southern Crimes in Indiana, when he came through Kentucky on uh, the book tour for this one up at Carmichael's. I picked this one up there and he, he signed my copy for me. A uh, really cool dude. And the episode where he's on Paper Cuts with guest host Megan Lucas was a fantastic conversation. I don't know, we went on for an hour and a half or so, and then once the show was over, Frank and I talked for like another two hours until like midnight just off air. Uh, super nice guy, super cool. Um, I really enjoyed his writing. I definitely want to check out more of his work. Uh, this one is Back to the Dirt by Frank Bill. Uh, these next two books, I didn't read them in this order, but I've been listening to these on audiobook, and these are uh, rereads for me originally read them a long, long time ago, probably around when they came out, which I think is back in like 97, does it have? Uh, 92, goodness, that's even older than I thought it was. But I'm re-listening to the um, Tron, the original Thrawn trilogy by Timothy Zahn in anticipation of the new Ahsoka show, since Thrawn is going to be there. I wanted to reread these and see if they sort of pick and choose things from this and put them into the Ahsoka show. 
Uh, so I read book one, Heir to the Empire, on audiobook. I think Mark Thompson does the audiobooks, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that's him. And then I've also finished book two, uh, Dark Force Rising in the Thrawn Trilogy. Um, they're just as I remember them. I love these books. These are probably one of the first Expanded Universe books I read way back in the day. Uh, these and then the, the X-Wing books, the Rogue Squadron books, and then a couple other ones here and there. Yeah, these are just as good as I remembered. Currently listening to book three. Uh, is it over here? Yeah, The Last Command. I'm listening to that one on audiobook right now. I'm probably only a couple hours into it. Yeah, I love these. You know, with Thrawn and Joris Sibeoth, and then Luke, or not Luke, but um, Leia is pregnant with the twins, and Luke's kind of doing his Jedi thing. Mara Jade's here. Yeah, really cool stuff. I, I really do hope they pick some of this stuff from here and put it into the Ahsoka show. I know some of it they can't do since the new canon timeline. I, mean, I know Captain Pelion, he was in season three of The Mandalorian, so he's now canon. He's Thrawn's kind of right-hand man. Um, the Nogri have already happened back in the Rebels TV show. So I'm curious to see how they what they pull from here since it's a different timeline. Since they brought Thrawn in earlier, now he's coming back. Anyway, that's probably getting confusing if you have no idea what I'm talking about. But yeah, these are fun books. If you've never read these, I would suggest you go back and check them out. This is book one, Heir to the Empire, and then book two of the trilogy, Dark Force Rising. Uh, that trilogy is by Timothy Zahn. Uh, next up, I read this short story collection, um, How Lovely to Be a Woman, Stories and Poems by Tiffany Michelle Brown. I uh, can't see it too good because of this stupid not-for-resale bar on here. The cover is cool. It's a Don Noble cover. You kind of see her better on the back. This gnarly-looking woman with scales and spikes and almost like this crustacean kind of headpiece coming up. Uh, this was a really fun collection. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's got a good mix of, like it says, stories and poems. Uh, kind of all different tones in here, really dealing with uh, motherhood and matriarchy and that kind of stuff. Uh, there, there's one in here. Which one is it? Uh, it's been a while since I've read this one. There's one in here where, oh man, the last one is like this Hallmark story, like this Christmas story, which was kind of funny. Uh, the poems are really good, but there's one in here where, oh man, I can't remember what happens, but... There's something with the eyeballs, which you, if you all have been a fan of the channel for a while, you know that eyeball stuff really freaks me out. And I think there was two stories in here that had to deal with the eyeballs, which I like them, but I did not like them, if you know what I mean. Yeah, this was a solid, solid collection. Uh, so if you like short story collections, if you like um, strong woman characters, and when I say strong woman characters, they're not always like the, the heroine in here. They're not always the good guy. Good guy or the good girl, however you want to say it. A lot of the female characters in here, the strong female characters, they're the bad guys, they're the villains, which was also really cool and refreshing. Solid collection. This is uh, Michelle's, sorry, this is Tiffany's debut collection. I'm really looking forward to checking out whatever she does next. Yeah, definitely check this one out. How Lovely to Be a Woman by Tiffany Michelle Brown. Um, up next, this one is a more recent read. Uh, this one is Boys in the Valley by Philip Fricasse. This one actually just came out last month in July, I believe. And it originally came out as like a special edition Thunderstorm books. And it sounded amazing. And it really it was a fantastic read. This is a sort of a religious horror book. It is, and it's also historical. It takes place in like the early 1900s, which I enjoyed. Uh, let's see if it has a date in here in the beginning. I think it does. Oh, 1898. So even, so no, 1898, and then it skips ahead some, that's the prologue. Uh, 1905 is when the majority of this takes place. So it's 1905, and it is um, St. Vincent's Orphanage for Boys, and it's for this isolated orphanage. And one night, something mysterious comes, to the, or some people come to the door that causes something mysterious to happen, and sort of some of the boys are transformed in a way without giving too much away and it's sort of uh everyone's sort of split up into these factions after that sort of the the good guys versus the bad guys uh very heavy lord of the flies vibes in this one if you've read that one i really like the the isolated setting they're all sort of stuck 
in this orphanage. It's winter time, so they can't really travel out to get help. You know, they're already sort of miles away from, you know, the closest sort of village. And then the heavy snows come in and they're sort of cut off for the winter most of the time anyway. And it's not like they have telephones and stuff back then, 1905. Uh, so it's, it's sort of a, a race against time to either get out and escape or defeat whatever this evil is that has infiltrated the orphanage before it is too late. It's sort of a ticking clock with the winter storm coming in. Uh, really well done. This is my first film for Kasi Reed. Definitely want to check out more of his stuff. Uh, yeah, it even says on the back, a gothic, gory Lord of the Flies, said Publishers Weekly. But yeah, religious horror mixed with Lord of the Flies type of vibes is what you're looking for for this one. Really good. I really enjoyed it. This one is Boys in the Valley from, from Philip Fricasi. Up next, this was one of my most anticipated uh, reads of the year because I love The Last House on Needless Street. This is Looking Glass Slant, Looking Glass Sound by Catra and Ward. This one just came out like on Tuesday, I think it was. Um, I did not like it as much as Looking Glass Sound, but I did enjoy it. And at one point in the book, something happened. There was this reveal, and I literally put the book down and said, What the f***? Because <laughs> it was just like, what is going on? I just was not expecting it. This one is... You don't know what's real. You don't know what's fake. You don't know who to believe. You don't know, you don't know who's telling the truth. You don't know who's making stuff up. Um, and it's just this twisty, turny, you know, you really have to put your head together and think. I still don't really know if I have completely figured out everything and put all the puzzle pieces together so they fit snugly. If, I know that's super vague and doesn't make any sense, but that's how I felt about it. Um, I, I love the beginning part. Um, we're on the beach. It's sort of back in the 80s, maybe. Is it in the 80s? I don't know if it says. Yeah, 1989. Um, and there's these teenagers out on the beach. The one is kind of an awkward kid, Wilder, and he makes these two friends. And then sort of the backdrop to that is there's this serial killer. Women are disappearing in this small little town. It's up in um, the northeast like in Maine and stuff like that. Uh, so Stephen King-ish vibes there. The story is nothing like what Stephen King would write, but just the setting is kind of Stephen King-ish. Uh, so there's that backdrop of the serial killer, which I love, and then we jump ahead, and then it's just, I don't want to give anything away because it was just like mind-boggling for me trying to put these pieces together and figure out what was real, what wasn't, what was in someone's head, what was actually happening. A uh, very... Not trippy in the sense of like it's psychedelic trippy, but very trippy and trying to figure out what is reality and what is not. Um, I bet this was a very complicated book for her to write. Uh, I did enjoy it, but not as much as Our Last House on Needle Street. This one is uh, Looking Glass Slant, Looking Glass Sound by Catriona Ward. Uh, this one, I don't really remember when I read it because I sort of would read pieces of it here and there. All the way through. This is a nonfiction book. Uh, this is 101 books to read before you are murdered by Sadie Mother Horror Hartman. Um, if you have read the Paperbacks from Hell book by Grady Hendrix, this is very much in the same vein as that. What Paperbacks from Hell did for like 70s and 80s paperbacks, this book does for modern horror. So everything in here was written from 2000 up until the year 2021 probably because uh, it was finished writing in 2022 so this is a uh, sort of a a books you should read guide for modern horror in the last 20 or so years and i love that there's not like a bunch of big name people in here like there's not stephen king and stuff a lot of it is sort of the smaller press indie horror that a lot of the majority of the public you know the the average horror reader probably wouldn't have heard of before and the title is misleading it says 101 books there's actually a lot more than 101 books mentioned in here uh, so sandy gives you more bang for your buck than you're actually expecting uh, but the art in here is gorgeous i love the art uh, marco let me find his name because i want to give him credit i believe it's marco does it say on the cover uh, marco fontanelli i believe yeah marco fontanelli did the cover and all the art inside like almost every page has artwork on it and it's a really gorgeous looking book. Like here's an example. This is 
uh, human monsters section. There's different sections in here, you know, like um, supernatural stuff, human monsters, creatures, all kinds of books in here. And it'll have sort of a, not necessarily a review, but just sort of Sadie's thoughts on the book and the emotional impact it had on her and why you should pick it up. So it kind of has that on there and it has like all these cool icons and themes to sort of get you into the mood or, you know, what this book is kind of about. It's really cool. I really dug it. And probably one of the coolest parts at the end is uh, there's a checklist. There's a book checklist. So you can check off, you know, once you read the book, check it off. So we sort of joked on Paper Cuts when she was on that, you know, hashtag the mother of war challenge to be able to go through and read all the books that are in here and check off all everything on the list. Uh, there's essays in here from other authors. There's author spotlights. Like um, one is V Castro where it talks about all her books and all the books you should read from her. So that's like 10 books just by itself, not including the other, you know, 101 books that are in here. A really cool book. I really dig it. If you are a fan of horror, if you're a seasoned fan of horror, I think you should check it out. If you're new and looking to get into horror, I think it's also perfect for you. She did a great balance of making this accessible for new to horror readers and horror veterans as well. A really cool book, 101 books to read before you're murdered by Sadie Mother Whore Hartman. We're getting near the end. Got three books left. So hang in there. We're almost done. Uh, up next, I read The Wild Dark by Catherine Silva. This is book one of her Wild Oblivion series. So there's two books out now. There's like two short stories in it. And she might be writing a book three, possibly. Uh, this is a cool combination of uh, like ghost and supernatural stuff mixed with this almost like fantastical dark forest cosmic core kind of thing that is sort of growing and overtaking and spreading across the world. It's sort of this unstoppable thing mixed with post-apocalyptic, a slow apocalypse horror story is what Catherine called it. And this book, book one, is a lot of you know we're in the present day and then we're flashing back to what happened in the past and going back and forth so our main character is a, a police officer and in the past her partner brody was killed we don't know how he was killed and that's what the flashbacks are that's getting closer and closer each time we flash back to what happened when he was killed and in the present day we're in this sort of the now of this new apocalypse. Something happens where a lot of people are now seeing the ghost of a loved one or a friend and just society breaks down and crumbles because everyone thinks they're going crazy. Uh, so that's the, the, the slow apocalypse of it is the now where everyone is seeing ghosts and then there's these weird dark, this weird dark forest that is slowly encroaching, encroaching and you don't want to go in the forest there's these crazy huge wolves in there that are not only trying to get the ghosts and take their souls back to the sort of this limbo purgatory realm, but they'll kill you know the humans as well. So it's a cool mix of mix of dark fantasy, post-apocalyptic horror, and supernatural elements. Uh, it's a fun book. I really enjoyed it. Uh, this is book one. I'm still working on book two, The Wild Fall. Probably about 50 percent, 40-ish percent done with this one. This one is book two, the sequel, which just came out recently as well. Uh, so if you like fantasy, some dark fantasy with some post-apocalyptic and some supernatural stuff, this is a mixed bag, has all those in there. Definitely check this one out. This is uh, The Wild Dark by Catherine Silva. Uh, next is uh, Those We Thought We Knew by David Joy. This one, I don't know if it's my favorite David Joy book. I still think... That, one, that title goes to Where All Light Tends to Go. This one's definitely probably his most powerful book, though. Uh, this one is dealing all with um, racism and white privilege and sort of legacy and heritage and things like that. It's a very, very powerful book. Um, I don't really want to say too much about what's going on, uh, but it takes place in uh, North Carolina, like all his books do, in Appalachia. And it's dealing with um, this, an African-American, uh, her name's Toya Gardner. So she's in college. She moves back. 
young black girl moves back home. Her grandmother lives here in this town. And then something happens to sort of incite this event where, you know, sort of the town itself is split apart into these two factions. You have sort of the, the white heritage sort of, you know, with the rebel flags and all that kind of stuff, you know, that faction versus sort of the Black Lives Matter sort of section as well. And it's just a really powerful book about, you know, you think you know who people are, but do you really know who anyone is? And, you know, these sort of dark secrets that come about with this event and, you know, the KKK is involved. Uh, there's hate crime, there's murder. So it's sort of this murder mystery about a whodunit. Uh, but it's much more, it's deeper and more powerful than just a simple whodunit murder mystery. Uh, highly suggest you check it out. Uh, this is Those We Thought We Knew by David Joy. And then the final book we're going to talk about today. Uh, this one might be my favorite book I've read so far this year. If not, it's definitely in like the top two or three. This one is uh, The Hollow Kind by Andy Davidson. This book was just utterly brilliant. I love, this is my second book from Davidson. I've also read The Bowman's Daughter. I love the way he writes a story. Um, he has beautiful prose, but I love the story to this one as well. Not only was the writing beautiful, but the story had me intrigued and hooked right from the very beginning. Uh, this one is also two different time frames flipping back and forth. I think it's from 1918 is one timeline, and then the other one is like 1989. So we're like the late 80s, and then also in like the early 1900s flipping back and forth. And this one, a lot of it takes place sort of, sort of in this uh, turpentine mill and the sort of the forest where they're har harvesting all the, the sap or whatever they're harvesting out of the resin and stuff from the trees. And there's this just this ancient evil on this land and how that evil has affected the land and this family through the different generations from the early 1900s all the way up till you know the 1980s or so um i loved the the cosmic horror in here it felt very much sort of like the last of us where whatever this entity is sort of gets into the ground and literally kind of spreads its roots and can grow things up and it can control like dead bodies like there's a bear on the cover here it's able to control things like that and there's like mushrooms and vines and all kinds of stuff sprouting out of these corpses uh, so really reminding me of um, now drawing a blank. What is that game called? The Last of Us. Um, so reminding me of that a lot. The Cosmic Horror elements in here were so fantastically done. I really, really love that. And the, the like the climax, like the final third of the book, which is so cinematic. I would love to see this turn into. I don't want it to turn in, to be turned into a movie because I feel like the, for time restraints, I'll have to cut too much out. I would love to see this turn into like a 10 episode mini series on like HBO or Amazon or something. I think it would be a fantastic uh, story to be translated from book to film. Just the visuals in here are so rich and so well done. Yeah, if you're a fan of cosmic horror, if you're a fan of sort of historical horror as well um, and dual timelines, I highly, highly suggest you check this out. Davidson's work, I think, is underappreciated. I feel like not many people talk about his writing. His writing is beautiful, and it's gorgeous, and it is very, very compelling. And if you've read The Bowman's Daughter, there's like one sentence in here near the end that ties this book and that book together, the two worlds together, which just put a smile on my face. I love connected universes like that. But yeah, this book was just, this book was brilliant. Uh, the Hollow Kind by Andy Davidson. Definitely, please, if you check out any of the books on this list, check this one out, because I don't feel like enough people are reading his stuff. Oh, that's it. That's everything I've read in the last few months. Uh, my recent-ish reads over uh, May, June, and July for the most part. Uh, so yeah, I appreciate you sticking around this long. If you have stuck around this long, if you've read any of the books I have talked about, let me know what you thought about them down in the comments below. If you liked them, if you didn't like them, whatever it may be. But yeah, that's it. So thank you all for spending your time with me today. Again, my name is Brad, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye.